Yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Uh, please like and subscribe. Yeah, I was talking with my mate today over Bermondsey, and I was just saying about um, it's funny, you know, when you like, I used to come, I used to go down Bermondsey quite a lot in the sugar loaf on the way now, and um, remember uh, the Arifs, Duke, Duggan, Dennis, and all that firm, and uh, at the sugar loaf pub. And I used to go down another pub around the corner, I forget the name of the pub now. But um, I used to meet a geezer in there, Mickey, uh, Peter Kelly, Peter Kelly, and some other people. Dennis, Dennis Mulligan, yeah, Dennis Mulligan, and a, a geezer called Teddy Williams. Teddy Williams had a big uh, Rolls Royce, uh, lived in Blackheath. I don't know if anybody ever remembers Ted, Tall Ted, and Dennis Mulligan and Ted used to be driving up and down the road. I've I already met uh, Dennis Mulligan in in Albany uh, when I first met him. He was a plonker, really. Um, bit loud. I mean, he didn't like me running around with Peter Kelly. He didn't like me because Peter Kelly didn't give much for anybody. And uh, me and Peter sort of always together. Me, Tommy Green, as well. Tommy Green. Um, a few, there was a lots of other, lots of other faces there. Pat Adams was there then. There was quite a few places there then. Uh, what was it? Lowy Man. Low Man. People remember Lowy Man. Nice fellow, Low Man. Um, anyway, anyway, then I used to run around the yard loads of times, yeah, always get myself fit. And it's funny, isn't it, when you meet someone in, like, in Bermondsey, um, Dennis Mulligan, and Dennis didn't like me as well because of Peter Kelly, he didn't like me at all. But um, good robbers, there was all good robbers, mate, all good people getting plenty of money. But everyone in Bermondsey used to get plenty of money, good people, mate. Anyway, so... When I eventually got another bit of bird, I went back to Albany. Don't forget, I'd already been chucked out of Albany on that 1074, but no way in a million years would you, go, would you think you're going to go back there, yeah? But they sent me back to Albany, and uh, I went back to uh, Sea Wing. On Sea Wing, lovely, mate, loved it. Let's go down, down, have a run around the field as usual, like before. But this time there was gates now. Now there's all fences everywhere. I would all little bat and turn out. There's fences, you know. And no one could no one could run up the wall like they used to run up the uh, up to the top, you know, get on the roof because of all the all the all the uh, all the drain pipes are all all uh, cemented in. They couldn't even see them, you know. And so there's no more of that. But I mean, in them days when I got on the, when I, when my mates got on the roof in 1976, fantastic, mate, fantastic, unbelievable. That was that was the hottest summer ever. 1976 was a hundred and something. And everyone who got scolded, got burnt, well, really burnt, yeah? Except for one, Johnny Patton. Uh, Johnny Patton went to Parkhurst. I've already said, uh, I think, this before. But Johnny Patton went to Parkhurst, uh, killed a guy, stabbed a guy over over, over uh, a card school, nicking the money, and uh, Johnny Patton wound up, wound up in Winchester, or no, Wakefield, with uh, with the other fella. Uh, what's his name? Bronson, Charles Bronson. And there was mates in the big cages, so I also like Johnny Patton, and plenty of arsehole, plenty of arsehole, my mate was there, Toby, I think Toby was all quite sure, so anyway, and that was all about, like, it's funny when you come out of prison, you go down Bermondsey again, meeting Peter Kelly and all that lot, and uh, um, Billy, Billy Ed at the pub, uh, the, the Lil, the Lily pub, anyway, and uh, anyway, meeting Dennis Mulligan with tall Teddy Williams, and then go back in prison again, and he's there, he ate my guts, mate. And it's funny, really, that I can bump into someone in Bermondsey, and then when I went back to Albany, he's there again. And this time he tried to kill me. I mean, he tried to kill me, uh, him and a few others. Um, he didn't like me because I was flashed before, he says. And uh, this time he wanted to teach me a lesson. He couldn't teach me a lesson, mate. Um, I'm right here, and I'm a strong, big, powerful man, mate. And you ain't going to do me any, no, no damage. Even though he did put me in hospital for a couple of weeks, yeah. Um, he ain't doing me that much damage, mate. I'm going to come out big and strong again, yeah? I'm in a hit with everything, yeah? I've been, got forks, knives, not knives, forks, spades, the wakes, they hit me with everything, mate. Smashed all my other pieces on my back, stabbed me up a few times, you know, and done on my legs and my arms. I always have trouble with my legs now, you know what I mean? But I was strong, I got out of it, and, um, Hospital, and we all got shipped out. Everybody got shipped out because of the right the number bit of trouble was in there, and we all got shanked, shipped out. And and then um, I wound up in Wandsworth Prison, and I couldn't believe it when I was in Wandsworth and go downstairs 
And who's there? Mulligan. Mate, I want them bad, man. After what he done me, he tried to kill me, mate. He tried to kill me. You know, and, uh, and I just really bashed him up, mate. Smashed his jaw, shattered his, shattered his jaw. I mean, one punch. I just shattered his jaw, mate. Shattered it. You know, and, 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 and then the kid come in. The kid that he was bullying also, he bashed him up, yeah? He gave him a few kicks, this, that, and the other bit. Mulligan was a little bit of a limpy taker. I mean, come on, he tried to kill me, fucking four or five handed, mate. They stabbed me with everything, you know what I mean? And forks and everything. I mean, I was left out as I, you know what I mean? And it's only the grace of God that the screws come down and got me and took me up to an outside hospital, you know? I remember going across the water. That's the time across the water, mate. I was in such a bad way. I think they took me to Parkhurst Hall, Parkhurst Hospital first, to see, you know, to banish me up, get me sorted out before they took me across the water. But I was in a bad, bad way, mate. But I survived and uh, go to uh, Wandsworth and meet him in there and, and I've got to do what I've got to do. But I should have done a lot more than that. I should have done a lot more than just break his jaw, smash his jaw to pieces. I should have done a lot more, but I didn't, yeah? I let it go. And uh, really, and, and I mean, them sort of things, the amount of people that I met in prison, mate, you wouldn't believe the people that I've met in prison, mate. The, the, the names, the faces, you know, I mean, one of my, one, one good guy I liked in there was David Fraser. David Fraser, I think he got done with Chrissy McCormack, I'm not quite sure. Chrissy McCormack, um, he can have a row. Chrissy McCormack can have a row, mate. He was a dangerous, dangerous man, Chrissy McCormack. He could, he could march on a bit, mate, Chris. I don't really know him that well. Uh, a lot of people said to me that me and him would have it off, but why are they not a geezer? You don't know what I mean, mate. As far as I'm concerned, he can have a right row. I know that he can have a fight, Chris McCormick. Then there was, uh, I think it was, um, what was it? Who, was it? Who else is it? Um, I'll get it in a minute. Um, oh, my God. Um, anyway, who was Nick with that? Look, I know David Fraser, Chris McCormick. Who was the other one? Um, oh, what is his name? Not, not Frank. Yeah, Frankie. Anyway, I'll get it. I'll get it. It comes to me in a minute. Uh, it comes to me in a minute. But, yeah, I, I mean, I've met some really nice people in there. I mean, the Bowie brothers, I love them Bowie brothers, mate. They was good people. I mean, all these people that I met in prison, I mean, what's the name? Who, who else is that? So, um, the guy that um, they put all the stuff over, all, over the, all over the bridges, didn't it? Uh, for him and all that game, thinking he was, uh, you know, innocent. Uh, what was his name? Tell me uh, on the comments, you know, who it was. Uh, uh, the guy that painted all the, on the bridges and all this, that and the other, about he was innocent and he went straight out. Everybody got him out on a, on a pill and he went straight out and done another one on my body. You know, come on, mate. <laughs> he's, he is what he is. If he does on my body, that's what he does, you know what I mean? And uh, But he said he was innocent and then he goes straight out and does the exact same thing. You know, a bit fair play with him, mate. He is what he is. And he's done what he's done, yeah? What's his name? What, think, tell me his name. Tell me his name, please. I'll get his name in a minute myself, yeah? But um, anyway, yeah, he was all right. I liked him. Uh, who else is there? Um, my, oh, that, what's Paul Seaborn? Anybody know Paul Seaborn? Paul, Zub, Paul Seaborn? Proper gangster, Paul, mate. Paul Seaborn. Old man, Paul Seaborn. Little guy, but very, very old man, Paul Seaborn. I liked him, Paul. I liked him. I, looked, I mean, I went in, when I went in Albany, um, what, 74, you know, like, um, I was a young kid, really, you know, uh, 20, what was I? 51, what, 51, 70, 70, 72, 71, 20, what's that, 20? I was about 23, 24. Do you know what I mean? Young, really. Um, but I was an handful, mate. I was big, 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 powerful man, you know what I mean? And then, Got myself on the on the, uh, on the uh, what's the name yeast tablets the yeast and uh, you know and and then and then not yeast tablets the actual yeast blocks blocks of yeast yeah so a little bit off the off the corner eat the yeast and uh, mate it was getting massive I mean anybody does try in try that yeah baker's yeast yeah you've got to get the blocks yeah the block of yeast yeah not the not the powder the blocks yeah and just nip a bit off you know and uh, yeah that's uh, a bit near the mark, mate, and it thins the blood out and it pumps, it gives you a right good pump up, yeah. I've just got um, myself some weights again, some better weights, uh, I've got myself a bench, so I'm going to start training again. Um, I've been doing a little bit, 
I've been doing a little bit every day, not much, uh, but you know, um, but you've got to watch it, you know, I mean, you've got to watch it, watch what you do, but I love to, I love to lift heavy weights, but I can't no more, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm always, I muck about in what, 40s, 40 keys, 50 keys, uh, dumbbells and all that, you know what I mean? But really, that's too much for me now, yeah? That's too much to really fry about. Um, I'll go down to what, 30 kilos, chuck them, up, chuck them about for 10s, 20 reps, you know what I mean? But get back into it. I love my training. I love training. I don't like to be uh, weak. I like to be very strong. You know, I need to be, I mean, come on, I'm, I'm quite old now to be fighting, but I still like to keep myself together as much as possible. I don't want to be bashed up by no one, you know what I mean? So I'll keep myself together. Uh, what's the name of that guy's name, man? I think I've got Dave... Uh, no, ah, oh, it's driving me mad. It's driving me mad. Why there's down all the paintings on the, on the bridges uh, saying it was innocent, yeah? But he was in Albany with us. Um, Fraser's was in there. I like Fraser's. Um, Kelly, who else is in there? Mate? There was so many faces in there. I don't even know their names, yeah? But, probably, but, but you know what? Do we take... Listen, I didn't do it. I didn't care about names. Names didn't mean nothing to me, mate. Names didn't mean nothing to me. They're only people, were they? People, names will make, people make people's names, you know what I mean? And they're only names, you know what I mean? They're sort of names and that's it. You know, names they ain't taking away, they ain't taking away. names. You know, if they can, if, if they can fight, mate, then they're all well, you know, but most of them, it ain't about fighting, mate. They're dangerous when they're going to take you out, aren't they? Take you away, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's where it's dangerous, isn't it? But anyway, I think it myself involved in much aggro with them people. I was always fighting the arseholes, really, when it comes to it. The people that uh, thought they were gangsters, and they were no one. Well, I wasn't a gangster. I was just a kid, you know. Uh, but after that, when I come out this time, I've become one. When I come out in, what, 1979, 78, when Chong's of prison burnt down. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable, mate. Chong's of prison, I mean, no one could know what that prison was about, mate. Best of the people was there, you know what I mean? I mean, that was fantastic prison, mate, you know? I mean, to go, to go there and to meet these people that I met, you know, I mean, the Tibbses, Jimmy Tibbs, Robert Tibbs, Johnny Tibbs, all the Tibbses, proper, proper people, mate. Proper hard, nice people, but very nice, you know what I mean? Bender, mate. I love Wendy Bender. I mean, I know I've said this before, but I'm just telling you the people I've met. I love, I like one. One, he looks after me, mate. He give me plenty of bits and pieces to get myself together, yeah? Thank you, Fraser. Funny, funny man, mate. He's crazy. Crazy as they come. <laughs> Thank you, Fraser. When he, when, when I first heard about him, yeah? And uh, when I was in Chelsea Prison, I've seen him once, up, but didn't see him to talk to, yeah? Just see him walk about with about 10 screws right around him, yeah? And yet he's five foot six, five foot seven, and that's it. You know, walks about, limps about. But anyway, it was all fighting of him, fighting him what he would do. He didn't give it, he didn't care, did he? So, same as Roy Shaw. I mean, Roy Shaw, I think there's only two people that have walked around the centre, walk over the centre of Wandsworth. No one walks over the centre of uh, three. Fred Rondell, Freddie Rondell from Paddington. Anybody heard of Freddie Rondell? Freddie Rondell was involved with his spaghetti siege. Freddie Rondell was a uh, gold medal, gold medalist in uh, Russia, uh, the Olympics. Uh, he was a judo expert. Freddie Rondell got the gold medal. But, I mean, Freddie Rondell, if anybody checks it out, mate, very, very, very powerful, short, old man. I used to see him down uh, Queensway, right, on the front there, on a, on a stall, on a stall outside the gambling club, I don't have it there anymore, on a stall, eating eating, uh, what, Swede, Swedes, uh, everything raw, everything raw, mate, Swedes, turnips, parsnips, all raw, eat carrots, everything raw, and eat, everything raw, and a very, very powerful man, yeah, and f I think Freddie Rondell, his little crew, I don't think the craze would have stood a chance, mate, I mean, Freddie Rondell was an army himself, you know what I mean, he was... He was an army. Alec Jones, Alec Jones's dad was an army. Very dangerous man, Alec Jones, my pal. 
His name was a very famous man. I think you should not know Freddie Rondell big time. Freddie Rondell used to knock about some nasty, nasty people. Uh, but I'm, I, I, as I was just saying about you know the, the, these people, these dangerous people, uh, Freddie Rondell was uh, an handful, mate, from Paddington. Believe me, he was um, he didn't muck about, mate. I mean, please check him out, Fred Rondell. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean when I come when when I come home when I come home from from in in nineteen what six seventy nine seventy nine I come home from from I think it was from the scrubs I come home. When shorts had burnt down, I mean, come on, it was like a big shock to be in a prison like that, you know, and you get everything you want, everything, you get good visits, you can drink on a visit, mate, drink on a visit, eat on a visit, eat anything on a visit, I mean, come on, I've told, I mean, I've told you, but Frankie Fraser, right, he used to have visits with his mum, his old mum, and she used to bring food up for him, chicken, Things like that, yeah. Big dumps of beef, a lamb, big lamb, lamb things. And Frank always used to say, Mum, I'm going to give the bones to the governor's dog because the governor had a dog. No, you're not. I'm taking it home. You ain't giving your food to the governor's dog. You know, every time, that was his little bit of a thing, Frank. He loves to, he loves to do that. Um, but it was nice, you know, going to visits and, and, and you could eat, drink, whatever you like. And to meet people that I met, Mickey Blackmore, uh, Mickey Blackmore, mate, uh, very, 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 I mean, I talk about dangerous people. Uh, I should imagine Vicky, Mickey Blackmore was one of the most dangerous guys that I've ever, ever come across. You know, he he was dangerous, Mick. He was a hitman. Uh, same as uh, the other guy, Watkins. They were both hitmen. Uh, that's why I think they both got put away when they went over to uh, Belgium or Holland. You know, I mean, to go into a different country, mate, uh, going to top someone, is um, different cat the fish, really. You've got to be a bit botly to go over there and do that, you know what I mean? But, you know, they shot Mickey Blackmore. They shot Will Atkins. But Mickey Blackmore come back to this country. He come back with my father-in-law. My father-in-law drove him back in the car. Um, he was dead. My father-in-law brought him back. Uh, my father-in-law's a proper man, Mickey Johnson, one eye. Mickey Johnson was a very involved with the Thursday game. Um, they also do all their work on the Thursday. I think I think Mickey was involved with quite a few people, uh, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous pe people. McDermott, is it McDermott? Anyway, it was uh, it, it, that Thursday game, mate, was heavy, yeah. And my father-in-law was a dangerous, heavy man, yeah. But me and him never see eye to eye. I was with his daughter. His daughter, um, I was nearly as old as Mickey. I mean, Mickey was nearly as I was, nearly, yeah. Mickey was about two years older than me, you know, because I'm now I'm in Mickey's daughter. You can imagine that, can't you? You know what I mean? He was going mad. But, but that, what happens? Sorry, all that, mate. But I mean, I met Danny, uh, Danny Johnson, uh, his daughter in Power Joey's. Is it Power Joey? Yeah, Power Joey's. Uh, we was upstairs. Uh, I was up with all the other boys. Uh, Mickey Gooch, uh, Ray Sullivan, uh, Ray Sullivan. Uh, I think I'm not quite Gary Stretch, maybe. Uh, Gary Kendall, um, I'm, not, not, I'm not quite sure if Nigel Ben is there, but I think Nigel was there. There was uh, another guy, uh, what's his name? Um, anyway, and sorry, I keep forgetting names, but I'm getting so old, you know, old, isn't it? Anyway, so um, who was it? Um, anyway, this is a guy who had the Rolls Royce, so we are much sure we remember his name, you know, Alan Stanton? Not Alan Stanton, no, Alan's not Alan Stanton, no. Anyway, Nobby Griffiths, that's it. Nobby Griffiths, I was to look after all that lot. So anyway, my Danny was under the piano. She was, uh, she was a, um, a waitress in Power Joey's, and uh, she was under the piano. She'd finished, and she was nicking the bottles of champagne from the top of the piano. And I met her like that, and uh, she was lovely, Danny. I mean, I mean, if anybody, if anybody knows Danny, I mean Danny Johnson. I mean her son, my son, right. He's just come back from Australia. Um, he's a rugby player, powerful, powerful boy, six foot three, six foot four, big, big, powerful man. I hope he's watching his podcast. He's not even phoned his. He's phoned his dad up, but listen, he's with his mum. I can't blame him. He hates his dad, and I suppose in the way for what I mean between me and her, 
and the family what I did. What I did wasn't so uh, so good, mate. And I'm very sorry for what I did, and I apologise. And apologies. Uh, I know that well, Danny would never accept them because I know what Danny's like. I've been was with Danny quite some time, and uh, she's a very very hard woman. She's like her mum, uh, Dina. Dina's very hard. Nick is very hard, and Danny thinks Danny was more like a man than she was a woman. I bet she was as beautiful as she was a model. I mean, she was 5 foot 10, 5 11, nearly 6 foot, and she was stunning, mate. Stunning. I mean, she was a model, mate, and and me and her fell, fell for each other. I think I, I think I must have got an head lock. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny was lovely, mate. Me and Danny, but as I said, my son, my son's um, just, just gone with his mum. I mean, he's come all the way back from Australia, and I ain't seen him for what? I don't know. 20 odd years, and he ain't come and see his dad. It's quite hurtful, isn't it? You know what I mean? You know, he, he wants to have a fight with his dad. Well, you know, whatever he wants to do, he can do, you know what I mean? I'm his dad. He can do whatever he wants to do. What is he? I'll eat my boy. No way, mate. I, don't eat my, I wouldn't eat my boy. He can eat his dad, but I wouldn't eat my boy. You know what I mean? I love him, man. But, you know, but he should come and see me. He should at least phone his dad. You know what I mean? But he, he hasn't. He hasn't. He's just said, I'm. When I, he, he phoned me, he did phone my phone, and he said um, he's in um, Eng, in in England, and uh, he's, I said, well, come and see me, you know, and he sort of phoned me up, and let me know where you are, but I said, do you have any mums? He said, look, I, he said, look, I, I'm going to tell you where I am, I'll be in touch with you, well, bully tactics, mate, you know, bully tactics to his dad, <laughs> Is you know what I mean? Come on, son, behave yourself and be a big boy and get phone your dad, yeah? I know you're watching me podcast. Phone your dad. You got my number, phone me, yeah? And get your mum to phone me. Oh, come on, it's like 20 odd years we've not been together, maybe even more. You know, and we ain't talking after all that time. Come on, it's like what well, on the bridge, man. Let it go. Just say it, just talk to me, let me know how you are. You know, let me know your little dogs are, your French bulldogs. You know, I want to know my Ruby Ray is. I've got a daughter called Ruby Ray. Lovely, isn't it? Ruby Ray. Do you know where she was born? Ruby Ray. She, mum took her home, Danny, and I went to a jewellery shop across the road. Big jewellers, massive jewellers. Antique jewellery shop. And I bought a bracelet, yeah, uh, for my little girl. But the bracelet, it's um, it's very, very tiny, and you put links on it. You buy it with the links, all different really old gold links, yeah? And it gets, goes with all of it for when she gets really big. Whether or not mum sold it or mum gave it away, I don't know. Mum had all my jewellery. I didn't have nothing. Everything went to, to Danny. I mean, Danny had some beautiful jewellery, mate. I mean, come on, I did. It's a spoiler like that. Um, but my dad used to hide things. You never find them. You know what I mean? Like a dad. A dad used to hide things. A mum used to hide things. Danny's got it all from my mum. You know what I mean? Who used to hide it. Hide it. A mum was really beautiful, my dad. Her mum was really beautiful, you know, and tight, quite tiny compared to Danny. Uh, Danny was very tall. The old man was quite tall. But as I said, me and the old man didn't get on. Uh, the brother's Mickey. Mickey's a, a surveyor. I've been told now he's a multi-man in there. Uh, best doing surveying. Crikey, good, mate. I think I might get into that myself. And John. John's a, a top chef. He used to work at Langan's. You must know Langans. Anybody know Langans? I don't know if Langans is still there. Good restaurant, Langans, mate. I mean, I used to go there with Danny. Quite a lot, Langans. Danny used to work at a place called Odin's. Odin was Odin's was also owned by um, Peter. Peter is it? Was that Peter? Um, anyway, oh, <laughs> Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers used to own Odin's and own Langans. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, and Crikey. And my Danny, my Danny was uh, one of the top uh, waitresses there at Odin's. When I met, when I met my Danny, mate, I remember having a fight um, up the city with some some guys, and I, as I told you, I hit really, really hard, yeah. And I smashed my 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 knuckles on their teeth, yeah. I must have knocked one of the teeth all out, yeah. But I smashed my hands, yeah. I mean, I. St- Cuts in my hands on one of my knuckles, you wouldn't believe, yeah? It must have been, what, six, seven inches long? You know what I mean? And it just smashed my, yeah, all little cuts everywhere. 
and um, when I went to Odin's, uh, to my daddy's, and I said, look, Dan, and she called me out, we got me sorted out, this, that, and the other. And anyway, me and my daddy, uh, when when we got to know each other, there was a shop around the corner of my daddy, and it was a jewellery shop, big jewellery shop, yeah. And um, I love my daddy that much, yeah. I bought her this ring, yeah, shaped like a heart, about four colour diamond ring, shaped like a heart, yeah. And I bought that as I bought that as an uh, as an engagement ring. It was nice, so nice, you know. What I mean? So nice to give it. So I mean, I took her around the corner, and uh, I said, "What would you like? You know, what if, if you wanted something, what would you like?" Tell me. She said, "I love a ring like way, a heart shaped ring." I said, "Really?" I said, "What well, like this?" And it was <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's come on, mate. All their memories, and she's still there, and still looks. I know she looks at my podcast. I know you look at my podcast, Dan. Uh, you know, you should you should at least phone me. My son's got my number. Talk to me. I mean, come on, it's all water under the bridge. I know you hate my guts, Dan, but I've got two kids by you, Sonny and Ruby Ray. I haven't seen Ruby Ray. Uh, come on, she's grown up now. And uh, he was telling me, Sonny, that she resembles me. Poor girl. <laughs> he said, she's got the dad's, the dad's looks about her. Uh, I, miss, I miss her, mate, you know, and you should... Uh, Somehow, let me talk to my daughter. It's hard, isn't it? We, we all have it, don't we? I mean, how many people out there have had it, you know? You get a woman scorned. You can't be a woman scorned, mate. I mean, once they turn, they turn. And uh, it's very, 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 especially the woman I was married to, well, married, she was my common life, wife, there. Yeah? And, uh, you know, I mean, we've got good memories, me and her. We've got a few bad ones. And my Danny was a person that if you hit her, She'd eat you back twice as hard. <laughs> I swear my life. You couldn't muck about her, mate. And we had money everywhere at that time when I lived there in Kingston. We had money everywhere. And my daddy, when, I, when my daddy said she wants money for shopping, I go, how much you want, darling? And she'd go like that. That much. <laughs> she, never, she never asked her the case like she'd go, I want that much. And yes. <laughs> and she'd come back with, that much, nothing, yeah, love a lot, you know what I mean, I used to love it, man, and anyway, I miss her very much, and I'd love her to call me, just as friends, be nice, just as call her as friends, as an arsehole, as an old man, but we all change, um, I've changed a lot in the way I am, uh, you know, and uh, that's it, we, we all change it, mate, and, uh, you know, just hope one day that she does find me up, and we can talk, you know, why not, but anyway, I mean, there must be lots of you out there uh, who same thing. Just comment me and let me know what sort of uh, relationship you've got and uh, do you go through the same thing. I mean, I've gone through so much in my life, you know. Um, big, big bad times, good times. Most of them uh, being good times because prison, you know, believe it or not, you don't really remember too much about the bad times. You always remember the good times. Uh, but... Sorry to say that I've had too many bad times. I've had a lot of bad times in prison. I've got out of it. I've got out of it. Um, being on crack, you know, being killed nearly twice and uh, and all that, yeah. And then going in prison and just fighting anybody that wanted to have a fight with me, you know what I mean? Have a, have a fight. I never backed down from anybody. Anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, mate. I didn't back down from anybody. You know, I'm a man. I only got two fists, mate. Same as anybody else. And that's what it is, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, you know, it's about who gets it in first or who can take it first, mate. If you can take it, you're in trouble, aren't you? You know what I mean? I know I can take it, you know. And, you know, a couple of times I'll be second best. It don't hurt me second best, mate. But being second best sometimes, that person don't want to fight you again, believe me, yeah? And sometimes I've been second best and gone back and be first best because I don't want to be beat, you know? But no big thing about being beat, mate. You know what I mean? No big thing about being beat. You know, to be bashed up in a fight, there's nothing nothing bad in that, mate. If you get bashed up by four or five people, like Mulligan done to me, that's completely different. I mean, that's bully tactics, isn't it? You know what I mean? They, they couldn't do me by themselves, so they had to come and do me behind with fucking shovels and forks and rakes and things like that, yeah? And But when me, me and Dennis met one-to-one, -one, I messed his face to pieces. Because he deserved that, mate. He deserved that as much as I didn't, as much as I hate myself for what I did to his face, and you know, smash his face up, and he's dead. 
Rest in peace, Dennis Mulligan, mate. I, 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 I apologise for what I'm saying, but mate, you deserve that, mate, because you, you come out, you come all that way from from the garden back to kill me, mate. You sit, you, you know, you fucking dumb me in. You all, you lot hurt me big time, you know. He did hurt me big time, but as a big man, I got over it and I come become stronger and bigger, mate. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about, becoming stronger and bigger. Anyway. I can go on and on and on this podcast because I like it today, you know what I mean? But I'm going to say, uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, please like and subscribe. I want to get as many subscribers as I can. I'm trying to catch a few people. I know they're really in front of me. I haven't... See, what I don't do, I don't do no interviews with people. You know, I should do. Uh, I'm gonna, there's a guy called uh, Chris Bowers. Uh, Bowers, is it uh, Bowers? J- Jamie Bowers. Jamie Bowers, if you're watching, mate, I'm going to phone you up. I'm going to try and uh, get Jamie, uh, if possible, to f- put a few pennies in uh, and help me out, get some some stuff from my podcast. I'm going to get some nice a nice camera and lights and all that from my podcast and do some nice interviews, yeah? I don't want to do any interviews just with a camera, you know. I want to do the lights, get everything nicely prepared and start going around meeting people, you know, like Kevin Paddock, I mean, I'd love to meet his brother Sid, but Sid got killed in a motorbike. Um, you know, he lost his leg and all this, that and the other. I will see, I will go and see Kevin. There's another guy I'm going to see, Danny. My mate Danny, he's, he's a fam, fantastic actor. He's done The Craze. He was a police, the police officer in The Craze, detective who knit The Craze. He's played some great parts, my mate. He's done about 30 films. I'm going to get him on the podcast. He's up for it. I mean, the greatest person I'd love to get on the podcast would be Brian Cox. I mean, Brian Cox is my mate, you know. I mean, he used to go around my mum's house for dinner on a Saturday and a Sunday, you know what I mean? So that's, sort of, that's a nice guy to get on the podcast, isn't it? Brian Cox. I'd love to do that, mate. I'd do anything to see him, mate. Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe and have a nice, have a nice evening, yeah? Bye-bye.